but it's heavy. I've bought a lead. That was heavy. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now, I have got myself a lead. This popped up online. It was advertised as an unwanted gift. The guy who sold it had bought himself a bigger one. Brand new, still in the box. It came with a set of chisels and a chuck for about 50% less than I could find anywhere online for. So I had to go and get it. I couldn't pass it up. And uh, so here it is. Now, I know absolutely nothing about wood turning. This is another rabbit hole I intend on going down. So I'm gonna pour myself into learning all about wood turning and hopefully you guys wanna join me on this journey too. So I'll share it all with you. So this is gonna be an unboxing and setup of this record power DML320 um, lead. I'll take you through all the specs on it. I'll show you everything that comes in the box. It's a variable speed lead. It's a pretty good one, I believe. And a brand new set of chisels, a brand new chuck. So I'll show you all them as well. So yeah, without further ado, I get my breath back and uh, we'll do an unboxing. Let's do it. Okay, let's just take a quick look at the chisels first, nice and handy. So let me see if you can see that, you can. So it's the record power chisels as well. Six piece, high speed steel, professional spindle turning set. And like I say, these are brand, brand new as well, never used. Still have the coatings on them. So we have various gouges here. I don't know a whole lot about these. Again, the names and stuff, I have to learn what these are all used for and stuff. I know a little bit about metal turning, but I've never done any wood turning. So I'm assuming that's a parting tool. Uh, we have a gouge, maybe that's the roughing gouge there. And we have a skew chisel and uh, a couple of more gouges. So again, I have to learn what the various things are for and how to use them. So that'll be interesting, but they look pretty good. And like I said, they're brand new. Got a great deal on it. So. I think I have everything I need to get going. Also got a chuck, and this is the SC3 geared scroll chuck package. In the box we get the SC3 geared scroll chuck. We have a general purpose jaws, 50 millimeter or two inch. And we have a wood worm screw, right hand thread, and a chuck for it. This package also includes a faceplate, two inch or 50 millimeters. Now, again, I have to learn what all these things do and what they're used for, how you use them. And I've already broke the handle. Very good. Now, let's just a, a quick look at the chuck itself. Chuck key. That's all fairly straightforward, I reckon. There is the wood worm screw. Various different parts. They look like the jaws of the other part. And there is the plate. So again, I have to learn what all these things do, how much you use them for. So that should be interesting. So yeah, it came with a chuck and some chisels and I've already managed to break the clasp, which is great. So I think that should get me started. Let's have a look at the chuck, or the lead, I should say. Right, let's get this box open and see what we got. Nice big book of instructions, which is handy. It's always nice to have something that you can read in your hand and you don't have to go online for. So I will have a read through that and get all the specs so I can pretend I know what I'm talking about. So I'll take you through all the specs in a minute just as we get everything unboxed. So there's our tool rest, I'm assuming. Various spanners. That looks like, I'm not sure what the name is, but it's for knocking out the chuck. It's a Morris taper chuck, similar to what's on, um, you'd find on a pillar drill and that kind of thing. And uh, that's for knocking it out. I do know that much. Allen keys and some allen bolts. There is a Morris taper, and that goes on the end, or the tail stock. I'm not sure the name of that, but I know that this centers on your piece of timber that you're turning in the tail stock. And you can see it's a number two Morris taper. So uh, these chucks just taper out and they just friction fit in place, similar to a pillar drill and a metal working lathe. Here is, this goes on the, head end, I believe it's called, I don't know. But uh, yeah, similar again, a point there that you basically put your piece of timber on. When you're turning, this looks like a tool holder, a plastic tool holder. So I'm assuming that mounts to the actual lathe itself. And we just have a big load of polystyrene. And then we have the lathe itself. Now this thing is over 50 kilos, so it's well, up somewhere up around 120 pounds weight. And it's pretty heavy. So uh, 
Yeah, let me get this out now. This could be hilarious. Yeah, at least we're on the workbench. Hmm, there we go. Let me get this all cleaned up and I'll get back to you. Right, I have it unpacked and cleaned up and I've kind of familiarized myself with the terminology. So this is what the lathe actually comes with. So we have our tool rest here. We have our knockout bar. We have a revolving center, so that goes into our tailstock. We have a four-pronged drive center, which goes into our headstock. We have a drive center knockout bar. Then we just have our adjustment handles for our tailstock and our headstock. And we have a faceplate. And then we just have the two spanners, one for the faceplate and one for the spindle wrench. So faceplate wrench, wrench and spindle wrench, and then the various Allen keys to open up the various parts to get at the belts and stuff. So there's, tr it's a, there's a belt on this with three pulleys and it also has a, a potentiometer on it by the looks of it to vary the speed and you get different RPM ranges between the three different belt positions. I'll take you through all that now in a minute and I'll show you the specs. But let me assemble all this and then we'll have a quick look. Okay, that's it fully assembled. So here it is in all its glory. Um, I won't take you through the, the specs on it. I'll take a picture of the plate on the back and I'll roll it in here now and you can pause the video. You can check the specs on it and uh, just have a quick look at that. So everything went again pretty, together pretty simple. Um, nothing too complicated. Everything seems to be nice and smooth. Again, our tail stock, we have measurements here, both in imperial and metric, which is nice and the action is really smooth on it. The tool rest and the mechanism is all nice and smooth, so that's pretty good. Everything seems to be really well made. It's really heavy, it's cast iron construction. I'll do a review on it in a few months time when I get the use of it and I understand the tool myself and uh, I've put it through its paces. I'll let you know all about it. You can buy a bed extension for this so you can make it even longer if you so choose, if you need to turn bigger stuff. But uh, I think for a lathe starting out and trying to get into wood turning, this is probably going to be the ideal size. Now, like I say, it is variable speed. I'll show you all that now in a second. There is three pulleys, so you can go between three pulleys, top and bottom, and you get an RPM range and a torque range between the three pulleys, and then you can adjust it here with the potentiometer. And it also has a forward and a reverse, which is very handy. So uh, yeah, let's power this thing up now and yeah, check it out. Well, here's the controls, simple stop start, potentiometer here for adjusting the RPM and we have a forward and reverse button here. So if we just start it off, it's on the middle belt so that should give me a RPM range of 550 to 1650. Again I'll roll in the plate here now and you can pause the video if you want to see the RPM ranges for the different belts and uh, that should be on a picture there now. So let's hit the start button and uh, see what happens. It's nice and smooth. So 530 RPM we're starting off at. Let's see if we bring this up. 660, 710, 760, 780, 820. So it seems to jump up in like ranges of 40 to 50 RPM, but it looks a bit just a bearish turn. Let's take it to its max on a setting. Yeah, that seems pretty smooth. And a 
a pretty quick stop. Nice. There's a close up of the headstock and the face plate mounted on it. So we'll just start it up there. You can see it's spinning. It seems pretty smooth. But uh, obviously I won't be able to test it until I put a piece in it and test it under load. We'll see just how smooth it is, but it seems fairly quiet and fairly smooth. Taking it through the rev range. And in order to put it in reverse, I just have to hit the stop button. Wait for the machine to turn off. Switch reverse. Turn it back on. Actually, that's forward now. It was in reverse. And so we can't hit the forward reverse button while it's operating. You have to hit the stop button, let the machine turn off, and then hit the reverse. Yeah, pretty good. So there you go. There's our three top pulleys. It's on the center one, top and bottom at the minute. So that gives us the, min the middle of our RPM range. You should have seen that picture. I, I should have rolled it in if I've edited it right. And uh, yeah, so if three pulleys on top, three down here on the bottom, and then you switch between whatever rev range you want and torque setting you want, and then you can adjust your RPM with your potentiometer on the front of it there. So yeah, all seems to be pretty smooth. There's the bottom three pulleys. So we have one, two, three again. It's middle to middle. And uh, like I say, that gives us the RPM. So just a quick look in there. Right, there we go. That has been a quick look at my new wood turning lathe, Record Power DML320. And uh, I have a bunch of record power tools in the shop. If you watch this channel, you've seen me use them a bunch of times. My bandsaw, my pillar drill, and my dust extraction system are all record power. They make great tools and uh, these things have not let me down yet, so I don't expect this to. Again, it's a good solid lathe, but it looks with cast iron construction. I don't know much about this. So like, this is a new rabbit hole for me to disappear down. So I know a few of you guys who watch this channel are into your wood turning. So any advice you have for me, any tips, tricks, things I should be looking out for, make sure and comment below and let me know. And uh, yeah, so upcoming videos of me trying to wood turn, it should be interesting. I'm going to place it over there beside the bandsaw in the shop. So I'm going to build a four foot version of this workbench. So that's going to be the next video, hopefully, if I get around to it in the next day or two. And uh, I'll take you through how to build this workbench. It's just made from two by fours or four by twos. And it's unbelievably solid, unbelievably steady. And it's a great workbench. So yeah, I'm going to make a four foot version of this. That should be good and solid. And uh, there shouldn't be any vibration for the lathe. Because I know vibration is your enemy when you're trying to turn stuff. Either on a metalworking lathe or on a woodworking lathe. I'm assuming it's the same thing. So yeah, I'm going to crack on now. Start preparing the shop and get ready to build this workbench. And I shall see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.